Everybody just does a little. If you, you just and, and then just do something where you are. Do something on your block. Do something on your block. You don't have to go nowhere. Just get your block organized. Talk to your neighbors. Do something. Yeah. We can't we can't keep going on as usual. It's not we can't stand we can't have business as usual. We cannot have business as usual. Yes, and that brings me to the program today where we got the young lady on here, Miss Zena Sparks. Chambers? That's right. I was gonna say you gotta add that chambers. She is the I just CEO. Got married. Oh, congratulations, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank she you. is the CEO of the Daryl Thomas Foundation. Darrell. Darrell Thomas, Thomas, Thomas yes. Foundation. And they have a back to school drive. See, this is what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Back to school drive. You know, this is something that they just all come together, they got a foundation and they getting it in. Yes, we are. And and, and it's Tomorrow. Tomorrow, 12 to 3. All right. Uh, Abracadabra Hair and Healing. It is the hair growth capital of the world. Okay. Uh, so we'll be having it at my salon. I'm a hairstylist there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Now, where are you yeah. at? Talk yeah. about it. Uh, it is in St. Anne, uh, 11134 Old St. Charles Road. Um, I'll be partnering with uh, the Chop Shop okay. as well as the Barber Shop. Uh, they are located in Florissant, Rob the Brand, uh, Kita, King Kita. Uh, Dwight, we're all getting together. And Mark doing Kita? No, not Mark Kita. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's select, select okay. styles for girls? Yeah, select styles. That? We're doing some select styles for girls, like twist, little twist. Oh, and, okay. Um, all right. Uh, blowouts, like straightening their okay. hair, trimming some ends. You know, okay. a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of back to school events and they only do haircuts for boys. And they don't have I, right? I, I've never like, heard of anything for girls. Like, some, some, girls. some stuff done. Yeah. So I've we never heard of to extend that courtesy to them as well. Yeah. We're going to have bouncy houses there. There, free uh, face painting. I got DJ Shay Money in the building. Uh, there's going to be a game truck for boys to, and girls to come up and play the games on the truck, outside the truck. Um, and we're going to be building awareness for my foundation. Really? Yeah. Book bags and school oh, supplies. Yeah, book bags. You got to mention that. School supplies. Uh, I just want to thank St. Louis for all the support, all the do donations that we've received. Um, people have been bringing by school supplies all week. We got long. over a hundred book bags so far. Well over a hundred. Oh, well, well over a hundred. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't so even count far. anymore. So yeah. far. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Stipulations for getting that zip uh, book bag. Uh, so. In order to receive one, mm -hmm. uh, you have to have your children present with you, and you have so to... So mama just can't come up and grab mama one. I'm taking this home with me. Mama can't just come up and grab me. five book bags yeah. for her kids that ain't right there. Now. That's what I'm you got to have some stipulations, <laughs> okay. you know. Um, but you also have to stop by our nurse station. Um, this foundation raises awareness about cardiovascular disease mm, okay. in young athletes. Um, and, and that's what this is all about. We're giving back uh, to the community, but we have to raise awareness about this silent killer. Uh, nine months ago, I lost my 13-year-old son wow. to an undiagnosed wow. uh, heart disease. I had no idea that he was sick, uh, no, no idea. He went into cardiac arrest uh, in the car with his father, and that's how I found out that something was wrong. Oh, so uh, I just vowed to... Sorry to hear that. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much. I just vowed to uh, make a difference and make sure that no other parent had to go through what I had. You know, in the past, I've heard of kids passing out, doing practice, passing away, but you never hear why afterwards. We assume it's dehydration or uh, heat, uh, like they had a heat stroke or something mm -hmm. like that. But right. these children have heart diseases, and they're not being... Uh, found in physicals. Wow. Did you guys know that they don't do heart exams for physicals? Wow. No, they don't. And um, so we're raising awareness about symptoms, yes. prevention. Uh, some of the symptoms are shortness of breath, yeah. uh, chest pain, uh, fainting, during ex exercises uh, and those it's so mild you know when you're running up and down a basketball court or in uh, heavy exercise everybody's tired everybody's huffing so it's something that can be easily overlooked mm -hmm. uh, another symptom is heart palpitations and yes. heart fluttering so you just have to really be talking to your kids and, and communicating uh, soon I'll be and hopefully you can help me with some um, some uh, advocating uh, uh, le for legal uh, advocating uh, about what well, legislation is what I meant um, to make mandated um, I'm sorry heart screenings okay. for for athletes when they go for physicals Absolutely. so that we can catch this Maybe right? get the yeah. that's a you know that's also, that's a something for uh, 
Carla so, May, some of those so people that are well, in I the need legislature. To be in contact with them. That's going to be my next. She'll move. be here. She's so, supposed to be coming, so she yeah. she'll be here. So you can talk to her yep. about that. You know, but see, what you are doing is an example of some of the things that need to be done and can be done. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have taken it upon yourself, formed a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, now you are about the business of helping kids Beautiful. with back to school. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. you, you're helping them with haircuts and uh, book bags and school supplies. That's that's the work of uh, one person. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so major though. I, we, we don't need a grand slam. We don't need home runs. Mm -hmm. We need them, but we hardly, we're not going to get them. We're not going to get a lot of those. Mm -hmm. But we can, we, but we can get is people like her yes. mm -hmm. coming together. Yes trying to make a difference. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And see, St. Louis, is what I like about St. Louis is it's not too big and it's not too small. It's manageable. It's just right. It's manageable. We can get our arms around the problems yes. here. Right, well, yep, we, yep. we want to say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. For contacting us. And Sister Felicia, yeah, she's Sister a nurse, Felicia. so she, yeah. you know, she, she's the president all right? over. It's it's right. Right. Yeah, she she's is the over. director yeah. of nurses for the foundation. Yeah. Okay. She's our like head nurse, lead nurse, um, and helps organizing all the you know terminology she's how we're going to. Yeah, yeah, she is so smooth with tell. these kids because you have to really connect when we're talking to these kids and let them know how important it is, yes. how serious it is yes. to. Um, you know, open their mouths and tell us. And also, I have just a word for the coaches. You have to, coaches, to all my coaches, you have to make sure that your kids, your teams, those kids that are uh, under you, know without a shadow of doubt that their health is your number one priority. They have to know that it is not weak to speak up. Right. You know, we have a lot of toxic masculinity that happens in the sports world. <laughs> I'm sorry. We call it toxic. toxic masculinity. They say things to the boys like, man up, quit crying like a girl. Right. What That's you true. wanted for, you know, they push them like that. And there very well could be something wrong with them. I, I believe that my son, you know, experienced some of that. And okay. he probably didn't what wasn't as vocal yeah. as he could have been right. had he known that there was an open door policy about anything, a headache, mm -hmm. anything he felt. Coaches, I encourage you, during practice, after practice, ask, hey, how you guys feeling? Everybody yeah. feeling okay? Anybody having any, you know, heart problems, you know, any fluttering or any headaches, any dizziness? You gotta get active. Mm -hmm. As well as, uh, sh thank you, Felicia, for reminding me, um, when you, if your kids have symptoms and you're concerned about <clears throat> About something and you go to the doctor and they say ah oh, it's just growing pains ah oh, they don't need it they're too young you know advocate right. don't take no for an answer you won't know unless you know right. okay well, right then, we really appreciate you right. so much. Right. Um, it's an article in the New York Times it's on the front page uh, of yesterday's uh, New York Times and um, I, I kind of followed this just a little bit but then uh, got into a conversation with some other people about it and this this is this um, charges delayed in death of twins Juan Rodriguez whose one-year-old twins died in his hot car with his wife and children in the Bronx on Thursday now some of the facts surrounding this it appears that well, you know, we give him credit. He's on his way to work. You know, he, sometimes you get caught up and you know, sometimes things get by you. But I, um, I've had got some specific concerns about the fact that the kids were in the car for eight hours. Eight hours? Yeah, he, he, he left the kids in the car for eight hours. Sure, that's unacceptable. You know, and I'm, you know, I can't understand for the life of me how do you forget about your children eight hours. Yeah, that's, 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 for eight hours? Yeah, that's unacceptable. You know, if he had had a thought, if he had had a thought about them, so he had eight hours. Yeah, that's unacceptable, man. I, I think so. I think so. He, those kids were in that car for eight hours before he realized or decided to, or some other people might have saw it. But how do you? How do you spend eight hours anywhere and not think about your kids? <clears throat> For eight hours? Now, maybe 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, maybe. 
and all. I ain't even going yeah. along with that. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. You know, I, I'm trying I know to you. How can you go? I, I, I'm, I'm just. I'm saying. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let's yeah. let's bag it up. Yeah. How do you get out the car without them kids and leave your kids yeah. in the car? Okay. Well, we are gonna give him that. He did that. But okay, I'm not, okay. But, but, yeah, right, yeah, we, man, but, right, but that's saying, an issue. He's supposed that's to an issue. Yeah. But I'm going to go with you. Right, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I think, take, I think I'm going to go down this road with yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hop on this road, too, because now all while I'm gone, my mind is on like, I, I got to be looking toward the car. I'm telling you, I would be doing mines. No. I can't be my kids somewhere, and I'm not what. I'm I ain't never got down like that. One year old? Oh, come on, bro. One year old? Yeah, that's a problem. Man, yeah. one year old. That's a problem. For eight Boy. hours, B. Man, that, 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 that's what eight hours. What are you doing, man? What are you doing for eight hours that you don't even have a thought about your children? I mean, if, if I just think that if he had had a thought, he would have automatically said, "Oh man, I forgot the kids. Ain't kids in the car." Yeah. But this man goes eight hours. And your kids in the car by themselves. Yeah. Man. Not only that. Uh, in some terrible heat. Man, you know, so yeah. I got a, I got a problem. With yeah, that, I do too. I don't want to cut it right motion, now. Right. We got a problem. We got to go to a break. All right. So then yeah, when we come break. back, because somebody just walked in the studio. I got so got we, Eddie Simmons is my man. You know that. I mean, uh, the Eddie, Eddie Simmons. That's right. The Eddie Simmons from St. Louis Police Department, retired sergeant. Whoop. All right. Listen oh, here. You listen to the Freeman Bosley Judy Show on KTZ 1600 AM. Keep it on lock. Keep it on quick lock. Quick plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add to, for the, tomorrow when they're doing that back to school uh, piece that the sister's doing. Devin Alexander played a big part in it. They forgot to mention that to us. He's going to be tomorrow. Sponsor. He's the biggest sponsor that they had. Devin Alexander. So I want yeah. to thank okay. Devin for what he's yeah. doing. Absolutely, he man. Constantly doing things out in this community. And we love Devin Alexander. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's our little guy there. Yeah, he's on it. He's on it, man. I, I haven't seen him in a while. I need to read. We need to. Uh, maybe I should go out there to that because I hadn't seen him in a long okay, time. Okay, maybe we a couple of years. Let's do that right. together. Who we All got right. here today, man? We got Eddie Simmons, man. I'm talking the Eddie Simmons. No, the, no, the man. The you know the. Uh, they were so glad Former when he got president the, of the Black the, Police Officers yeah. Association. Glad Would you say they was gl so glad <laughs> to get him out of that? <laughs> they, they was happy yeah, to see right. him go. Yeah, I thought they was happy to see Dennis Mike Glenn go, but you boy, that you know, it disturbs me the f that the mayor has lifted the residency requirement it, it, through executive order now for 30 police officers to live outside the city. Wow. That, you know, that that's unheard of. Man, I wish I could It is been. really unheard of. I wish I could have been in that room to see how that went because I know, <laughs> I know the, the police see officers how it went. <laughs> association yeah. had a lot to do with oh, that. Oh, absolutely. You know, I can understand uh, the city has its problems, but I look back uh, December the 9th, 1984, I was under an executive order that I, Eddie Simmons, and his family had to live in the city. Had to. Had to. Wasn't no Not, choice. No. Wasn't no thinking about it. Had to. Officers lost their jobs because they were sneaking out in the county and wow. living. Wow. And then there were officers that wow. what they did, they uh, knew they were out there, but as long as you were quiet and we didn't want you, you could stay out there. They didn't care. <laughs> so, But now <clears throat> it's came that it's for them. See, you didn't do that for me, right. even though I've been in my house right. in North St. Louis for 35 years. How long were you on the police department? That's right. 25. 25. 25, 25 years yeah. and uh, retired, and now and I'm you out. had to stay. You, you I stay. lived in the city. Yeah. 25 years. Yeah. You had to stay in the you city. You had, and they had checked, you. and had they, had a, they had a squad that would check yeah, they had to, to make certain. Go around and investigate. Lived, right? See, in when, when we were in office, yeah. Yeah. they tried the same thing, man. Sure did. Yeah. The th they tried the same thing, talking about, oh, man, we, uh, you got to do something about the residency rule. I said, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to enforce it. I said, we're going to do something about it. We're going to so, enforce it. And I see, here's that. the other thing. I remember that. That was an alderman by the name of Jim Shrewsbury. Yes, yes, sir. Probably one of the most conservative members of the Board of Aldermen. Correct. 16th Ward. Mm -hmm. In South St. Louis, St. Louis Hills. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
St. Louis Hills. He passed a resolution to have a non-binding referendum on the police residency rule put on the ballot. 70% of the people that 70% of people voted in favor of having everybody live in the city. If the city is good enough to pay you, it's good enough to live in. That's my rule, you used man. You always said it. That's my oh, rule. You, you if it's that. good enough to pay you, yeah, you it's good that. enough to live in. Now, I'm not telling you about where you at at McDonnell Douglas or where you at down here That's at different. Ralston Perina That's and different. where you at at these other places, but I'm talking about the city. If the city of St. Louis is good enough to pay you, if you're right. taking a check, if you sucking out that public trough, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it is. He'll, he'll go there. Hey, he'll go there. Yeah. I'm telling you that. Sucking out the public trough. Public trough. All of them. <laughs> sucking out the public trough. Oh, yeah. Is good enough to live in. Oh, yeah. You see, and here's the other piece. What kind of signal do, or does the mayor send to the rest of the region yeah. by, it's a vote of no confidence in yourself. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Trying it's a friends. vote of no confidence in friends. yourself. I don't have the confidence that I yeah. can lead this city into a better place. I don't have the confidence that I can lead this city in a manner in which all people would want to yes. live here. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have the confidence in myself that I can provide a better way. You see what I'm saying? This is a mealy-mouthed decision. Yeah. Mealy -mouthed. It's a mealy-mouthed, mealy-mouthed yes. decision to pass an executive order to allow officers to live outside this city, particularly in light of the fact that we just had a class mm -hmm. with 22, off, 22 cadets graduating and only one of them was black. Yeah. One black officer. Only one black yeah. officer. Yeah. They have no problem with that. So, 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 what, that is that, so what, what kind of message does that send? You know, also, in light of the fact and the backdrop of, what is it, how many, 80, at least 80 officers under investigation oh, yeah. for going out on the internet saying racist Things, but, it's but you know one thing. Too. For years, man, they had cop talk. It was absolutely. Oh, it was, it was they don't have it anymore. This ain't. This ain't. Oh, they kind of changed now because you got to put your name on it when you sign on. You have to use your real name. But these <laughs> oh, guys, no, cop man, talk? Yes. Yeah, oh, they did. They they would get on cop talk oh, and they would man. demean the the citizens of St. Louis and the black officers on the police department. And I, I at one time, I even caught up with a commander that he only this guy. We were in a meeting, and so he was the only one, me and another couple of brothers, that knew what we were talking about, and it was on Cop Talk, so I knew that he had put it on there, talking real bad about the brother, yeah. so I talked so bad about that white man, I mean, I went ham on him, and he couldn't say nothing, nothing. because he knew. Broke him down. I broke him down broke on that, him and he down. would just stare at me yeah. at the gas pumps, at the right. water fountain, at yeah. the restaurants. Absolutely. I didn't care. That's right. Because if you say it, I can talk That's about right. it. Like Nelly sure. say, feel me when I bring it. <laughs> yeah. Up in yeah. Here. Oh yeah. Feel me when I oh, bring yeah. it. You see, and that's, that, this that, this is intolerable, man. Yeah, it's, really it's, horrible, man. It's, it's intolerable. You got a police department that obviously is running amok. They should be it's, it's the tail wagging the dog. I don't, I don't that's understand. what you're talking about. The mayor is supposed to be a leader. Leadership is action, not position. Yes, sir. And tell them, hell no, we're not going to remove this gonna residency rule. Now go on that. and f I'm back there and do some crazy. policing. Yeah. You can't, you, you, you cannot, you cannot allow this. You see, because n next, everybody wants to get out. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody. What about the, you know, the, the regular city employee? They have to live in the city. Everybody. What's so special about the police? Now, I know, uh, and I love the officers that are out here helping us trying to solve crime and combat all of the ills that we have in our city, but we got some stinkers. We got some stinkers on that department, and they are beginning to, I'm beginning to think that the police department is running the city. 
That's the wrong way to run a railroad, okay, particularly department. particularly this police department. What about the fire department yeah. now, now they're gonna they're gonna lead too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, not? absolutely. Yeah. Now, twenty-two officers, was twenty-two or twenty-three? One of them, only one black person. Yeah, that's deep. Come on now, yeah, something is definitely wrong with that picture. It's, it, it, you needed to issue an executive order to correct okay. that. Yeah. But why you see what I'm saying? I, what, what uh, I'm okay. concerned about is what made her think, what made her do an executive order? That's, that's not yes. regular there, Mayor. No. She did the executive order because she couldn't get the Board of Aldermen that's to give point. an approval. Right. You see what I'm so saying? She, just she did an in and around. Hmm. And the Aldermen need to be having a fit. Yeah. yeah. They need to be having a fit. Go and here's the other piece. Yep. Go ham on them, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Here's the other piece. We need to look at whether the mayor has authority to issue an executive order over an ordinance requiring officers or requiring city employees yeah. to live in the city. Might even be charter. Yeah. Might even be the city charter. Mm. You I see? Yeah. So we need to take a look at that. Mm. You know? These people are something else, man. And nobody is saying anything. This town is running amok. Yeah. It's running amok. Uh, who's in charge? <laughs> oh, wait. Who, who's in charge? Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of when um, uh, Martin Sheehan, you ever see that movie Apocalypse Now? Yeah. Martin <laughs> Sheehan, they going through the jungles and all these other places uh, looking for this colonel, all yeah, right? right? And he comes across this firefight that's ha going on between the army and the Vietnamese. And so they jump down in the dugout and stuff, and he goes over to the office, he said, uh, he goes over to one of the army guys and who's firing, I mean, he's firing back out, firing out into the open, out into the dark and stuff like that. And he says, son, uh, who's in charge here? <laughs> and the guy looks at him and says, Ain't you? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? That, that's what we got here. Yeah. That is exactly what we have here, and it's and it's a terrible thing, man. I'm just not seeing anything like this. You know, as much as I disagree with Vin Shame, Vin Shame will tell him straight. Yeah. He tell him straight. He, he called them greedy pigs and bastards. Yes, that, that, and, they, and, and you know that putting it bluntly. You yeah, know, that, he, he, he held I, a line on I, I that. Like that. Conway told him no. Yeah. Every mayor has told them no. You see what I'm saying? And telling them no is what you're supposed to do. Right. And you're supposed to have no qualms about it, right. no reservations about it. Hmm. See. These people, I mean, they, uh, the, the police department, I guess, is effectively running the city because uh, she's abandoning uh, her position. Yeah. And, and, and now you, you, you look at it, a structure that's been in place all, all these, these years, years man. All these they years. Just, she just came and just yeah, crumbled, wiped crumbled, that crumbled, out right. when the order with a stroke of the pen. Yeah. And now that's a win for the association. They've been trying oh, and God. trying and trying. They glow with yeah. that right oh, now. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But we, we, the citizens yeah. in the city, are going to suffer from that. Well, right. Almost right. definitely. But see, here's the thing the police department is like water. You know, they say Fine. water will seek its highest level. Right. You, know, you can't push the water down. You can't. Yeah. Water's just gonna keep coming, just like a flood. Yeah, yeah. You know. So you, they're gonna seek their highest level. They're gonna seek everything that they possibly want, everything that they possibly could dream of. They're gonna ask for it. Oh yeah. And you got to be at the door and say no. Right. right. You got to be at the door and say no firmly. Yes. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Firmly. That's out of the question. And that's what you, you know, what they say, you got to put your foot down. Yeah. yeah. That's what you need. Those are situations where you got to put your foot down. And this organization is full of propagandists. Oh, okay, propagandistas. That, that's all. Huh? That's all. Yeah, that's a, full of propaganda. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and then to, uh, where are we with the investigations? Yeah, you don't hear about that anymore. Right. <laughs> we quiet. What? But in Arizona, in Philadelphia, okay, and call that. Else? Call oh, it. Yeah. Call it. Call oh, the yeah. road. Yeah. Arizona, oh, fired yeah. them. Fired them. Philadelphia, fired, fired them. Fired you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We still pussyfooting around. We walking around talking about uh, they can be Thera saved. No, they, they sue for some therapy. Uh, sensitized yeah. training. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a shame yeah. that you can you can actually type 
all this hateful rhetoric and then go out in a police car and go to the homes of these black people, that's man. Right. You there to serve that's right. them. That's right. What do you think you got coming yeah, if think? I'm on a scene and, I, and I'm talking against a white person that's done something wrong to me? Right. What do I have, Eddie Simmons, right. have coming to me? Nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing yeah, with nothing. that man who just wrote about how he hates, yeah. how he hates African American, yeah. how he hates yeah. Muslims, right. how he, he hates sure anything he of sure color, yeah. but that's who we paying. Yeah. The city is paying that man, that woman to go out in the streets and serve and protect that's right. us. That's oh, why please. you got to have an ethical society. You got to have a sister like Sister Heather uh, yeah. uh, um, tell oh, right man, now. Yeah. And, and see, yeah. and this is the reason they for years didn't want this here. Right. When you were there, Eddie, I can remember why I would get oh. calls. Oh, yeah. And you know, when you called me, I would come, but right I would get there. called. They didn't want you nowhere around. They didn't want no. Dennis nowhere around. Anybody who stood up for our people because that, I remember old Danny and them. I remember yeah. them attacking my mind. You ain't got to call Auntie Shahid. Yeah. We can sit down and talk. Don't what? call him. No, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait. Uh, uh, oh, Danny? Yeah, you know I know these guys. Do names. you remember old Danny? He was the remember, president of the police officer. I remember officer that old dog. That, that, I remember how he attacked. Lord, I'm just right. talking. How he attacked. He, how he allowed police officers to come from their beat to come down your street, your mom's street. Yeah, yeah. To okay. put tickets on her car. Yeah. and then put some other slander out that I really don't want to go off into because it's going to piss me back off again. Mm -hmm. But I'm just telling you, that's why they didn't want a person like you because what you wouldn't do, you wouldn't waver. You wouldn't tip those through the tulip and you would stand <laughs> up to that police department and make sure they understood yeah. what they had to do because y'all had a board there. Right. And this is the same old Danny who retired then subsequently wound up out at the zoo doing Showed security the, and the then it. they found out that he had child porn short eyes on his what computer. You say? Short, what, oh. short, short eyes. What does that? that mean? Short eyes. Yeah, short eyes. <laughs> <laughs> short eyes. Short That's eyes. a new thing. Child yeah. porn. Yeah. Kitty porn. porn. He had kitty porn yes, on did. his computer. Hundreds thing. and hundreds and hundreds wow. of them. That, that's the leader. That's that. That is the leader. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so, something's wrong with that picture. But you I see? got a problem with this woman, and, man, and that's why this time man, we cannot have four or five Negroes running for the same. Because they really gave her that position. Yes, yeah. She didn't have no bit. She don't. She don't bit more know what she doing than a man in the moon. Than a man in the moon. But she did. They got a saying, brother BJ DJ in Africa. When two brothers are arguing, the enemy can walk away to pride. He don't have to run. Ooh, and wow. in matter of fact, five Negroes decided they thought it was the most intelligent thing in the world <laughs> to run. They put a, 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 a person like her in office that don't know a football from a baseball. It's a terrible thing, man. Right. And I'm really concerned about where we're headed because if you roll over like that, mm -hmm. this is a major place. It's kind of snuck by a lot of folks here uh, that the she quick. issued this executive that's order, fair. you know, and it's qu and it's been quiet. But this is this is a major that's blow. A, that's a major blow. Major blow to the city yeah. of St. That's Louis. That's a major. Man. It's not he small. Was trying to let the police officers out the city. Yeah. yeah. They don't have to live let the here. Dogs out. Well, <laughs> now, 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 see the other thing about it. Why it's important that you. You live among the people that you are protecting yep. and trying to serve. Right. You see what I'm saying? That that's just basic. Do you remember how you had the police cars in front of the houses? They would give them cars to oh, drive, yeah. and when they drove home in front, when they got out the car, the car would be right in front of the house. It would be a deterrent too, yeah. because people just don't normally, when they see a car right there, just be that bold and ignorant. You know. And not only that, remember we had. First time homeowner sure money. Oh, we gave five thousand dollars to police officers to live in the I city. Yeah. Five thousand dollars as a down payment on a house. Yeah, you hear what I'm that saying? Why, why are those incentives? Why you know what, what happened with that? She just said, "Okay, I'm gonna sign here, and y'all can live out here." Why just come up with some alternatives? Yeah. She's you see what I'm saying? She's a pushover. Yeah, yeah. She's they, a pushover. And, and they pushed her out. <laughs> so push out. They pushed her out. I can't abide by it. No. I really can't, man. No. This is just, uh, it, uh, it's very disappointing because oh, yes. you, you, the police officers, you know, first of all, they, they, got, they want their pensions, all right? And so every year they have to do an actuary mm -hmm. to determine what the cost of living is is going to be. Mm -hmm. Every year they lie. Every year they lie. They come in with false actuarial reports, <laughs> you know, inflating things to, oh, we need 10%, 10%. Then, then our budget people 
come in with actuary reports, it's on two percent. Mm. But 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 if you if, if if you let them bully you, yes, like this character has done, yes. oh yeah, then this is what you get. Yeah, this is what you get. Th then they don't want to live in the city, so that right. that's another issue. You know, they always have some issues. Always. I mean, you think the police need to be doing some damn policing. Yes, correct. That's what they need to be doing, but they're always organizing, trying to deal with some other stuff. Yeah, you see that. what I'm saying? When they really need to be about the business of policing. How can we do a better job of policing our community? And, and man, one thing I want to say, because I see BJ giving us the oh, signal. Oh, break, break. Yeah, one of the things that I really hate that they do if they try to give the impression that here with the will against police, that's a no, lie. No, no. And I'm not going to let you get that off. No. We'll talk about it when we come back, but we're not against police. This brother here is a police officer, right. and we have a very good relationship. Yeah. We, most of us have right. blood members of our family Amen. on the police department. Right. So what you're not going to do is get that off, right. but what you ain't going to do is get this stuff off that you're doing. Right. See, because you're not dealing yeah. with no boot licking and no butt lickers on this right. program. Uh -huh. We say what the rest of them can't say. Right. You listen to the Freeman Bosley Jr. show on KTZ 1600 AM. Keep it on lock. Quit, Quit playing. Quit playing. Yeah. There are places, and I'm not saying you got to live over here. There are places that officers can live. You know, Central West End. They got people out there in the Central West End. Officers can live. You know, if you really want to try to get snooty or whatever, you can go live over in St. Louis Hills. Or you can go live over in Compton Heights. There are plenty, plate, plenty yes. of places yes. for police officers yes. to live. Yes. I don't know what that problem is. But let's, you know what? I want to hear from the people. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I've talked. I've talked long enough. I talk. I've talked. I've made my case. So I just want those who feel differently or help or agree with me or whatever. Give us a call at 334-8160. 314-3338-160. Where should the police live? Uh, that where where should the police live? If you call me now, if you call right now, 314-333-8160, you can get in, but you gotta call when I tell you, call now. You can get in. All right. 333-8160. Good morning, you're on the air. What's your question or comment? Yeah, you know it's me, bro. <laughs> How's my man? Pretty good, so it's an honor to listen to you. You know I'm addicted to your show. <laughs> Just like I used to be with Onion years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, so somebody said they should call you that you just listen to the radio all the time and you gonna call you you call in on all different kind of shows. But that's, yeah. I call it Demetrius Johnson. There's a couple shows that I call in. Yeah, okay. Well that's good. That's okay. I'm a straight shooter though. I speak from what I know. Hey, that's what's up. Go ahead. That's it. I call you because I know I'm addicted to your show. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I listen to it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And Well, this brother tells the truth. That's yeah. one thing. That's why we asked Eddie Simmons to come. Yeah. Well, I can tell. I've been yeah. around long right. that I can tell when somebody's a straight shooter. Yeah. But, but the thing is, when you have a corrupt system and you have people that are sick and tired of it, they're going to tell you the truth. Yeah. And that's the way That's right. It doesn't mean that you can do like the old mafia cops used to do in New York City where they got an envelope from the mafia boss to, to turn their head on certain things. And they used to have crooked organized crime kickbacks and payoffs. They used yeah. to make movies out of That's it right. on TV. But, All right, then. We got lines lit across the board, man. I'm sorry. Just get, get it out. Everything that you brought up <laughs> is right on the money. Yeah. Now, the trick is to get the public to move on it yeah. Well, the, the public ought to be mad as hell. I know that much. Thank All you, right. Man. Thanks a lot, motorcycle man. All right. Good morning. You on the air? Good morning. You on the air? What's your question or comment? Good morning, all you, my father's children. Yes, Lord. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. I, I salam alaikum. Well, alaikum salam. And to your guests, I'm listening to you guys every morning. Yes. Yeah. Every morning. I love, I love listening to the Freeman Father Joint Show. Ain't <laughs> hey, no city, I do too. There's what? never a dull moment. You oh, are no. never disappoint me. I appreciate y'all so much. Hey, but we, I must say, 
we all knew that Lyda Crusin was given that position. She walked in there, and they just gave it to her. We them. gave it to her. No, no, we gave it to her. Well, it was given to her. You know, we knew she was a puppet going in. We knew she was a puppet going in. <laughs> First of all. Second of all, those police officers, if you don't want to live in the city, yeah. work where you want to. Absolutely. That's right. Okay. That's work where you want to work. Okay. Thank you. W work out there where you want to live. <laughs> That's right. And then, and then third of all, those four, those persons that ran against her would never, ever, have to worry about me voting for them for anything because they gave her that position and would allow their puppet to just walk up in there and look where we at now. Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is a very big disappointment for yeah. us. Well, This is letting us know how much they care about us. Well, well here, you know, okay then. They don't care about yeah. us at all. Yeah, all right. All right, now. Thank you, thank you. Now, now we, we this just in. We have some information, Eddie. What is that that you got there? I uh, talk uh, with somebody that that does know. Right. It's fifty officers. Fifty officers. And it has not yet been signed, but it's on her desk. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Who prepared it then? Right. You see the thing that Why? that that's not Why? a bill that passed through the board of aldermen no, that's going to come to your desk no. and then you have to sign it. An executive order is something that you have ordered to be done. Yes, you hear what I'm saying yes. now. <laughs> who gave the order? Yeah, who, <laughs> okay, who, that's, what, okay. That's, what, that's what Don Corleone that's said, that's didn't he? Yeah, who, who gave who gave, gave the order? No, you no, see no, what I'm saying? Yeah. But here, th this is poppycock. Yeah. What you call it? It's poppycock. Yeah. That's what that is. This is poppycock. This is all a sham to create a ruse as if she's deliberating on whether or not she's going to sign the damn thing. She ordered it to be prepared. Yeah. Well, yeah. where does the executive orders come from? They come from the mayor. Yeah. It ain't like somebody else created an executive order. This is her order. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is her order. So I'm going on with it. 314-333-8160. 314-333-8160. Hello. Hey, what's happening? Uh, thank you, Freeman. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The police should live in our community. We need excellent role models, and we need to recruit dynamically to get young women of African descent and young men to want to be police right. officers. Right. You are doing a great job, Freeman. And I People, there is no um, shortage of applicants wanting to be on the police department. There is no shortage. <clears throat> you, you know, one of the things that you got to want first, you got to want to get the people in there. Correct. Well, see, I believe there is a a effort to make a shortage. I think uh, they they uh, making it okay. a shortage. I've talked to a lot of brothers that say they I have no record. I was in the military. I applied and they I got the letter in the mail saying that I don't qualify, but they don't tell me why. So I, I listened to Sergeant Christy Allen and I that that is Ooh, one yeah. one outstanding sister on that department. But that that commercial when they say St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department is looking for the brightest, the smartest and the brightest. I think she should be saying they're looking for the whitest because that's all that's all that's getting hired. What you just say, man? What you just say? That's all that's getting hired. If this last class is any indication. That's all that's getting hired. I mean, it's not like you just saying it. We got the proof. The proof is in the pudding. Yeah. yeah. I, I look back at that that all, all uh, uh, Caucasian class. Uh, when I was still there, I remember that the whole class, not one brother did they even hire. And I realized some didn't make it; you fall off. But as a just a, just as a factor, they always have a problem finding African American to do this job, right. and it's manufactured. That's right. I believe that. I really Look, do. When Henderson was in, oh yeah, oh we had great classes. We, did. we had great classes. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Because he was aggressively he really was. seeking black oh, applicants. He, he so was. he was yeah. all over the place trying to get black 
applicants. Yeah. And Harvey I, Fa I remember, you remember Harvey that? Foster, when I walk into that building, the first thing he said, man, please don't go up there and say nothing to this man. Because he said he's turning backwards, flips on top of my head, he's skating on my head, he wants some blacks in there. And every time you and Brother Showtime go in there and say anything to this man, I catch hell. Right. I'm just telling you, yeah. he made that his personal business, Chief Henderson did, making sure blacks came a in there absolutely. like that. But absolutely. You, and then, you know what I always look at, and I have to look at it, I don't care how long ago it was, that class that had all white, the next class that came out, it was predominantly all black. So then uh, the chief came to me, it was Chief Moko at that time, came to me and said, hey, hey, Eddie, what you think about that? <laughs> I said, I think it's horrible yeah. because you show me, you have shown me that, that you can, you can, you can hire African-Americans when you want to do right. that. When and right now, they don't, they don't really want to hire black people. No, they they don't. don't. Here's what they're interested in. They're interested. The police department is incestuous. It's a hotbed of incest. And the, the, the thing about they 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 hire their sons, their daughters, you know, their brother-in-laws, their son-in-laws, the nieces, the nephews. You got police that third generation, you know, people, oh my my uh, grandfather was a police yeah, officer. Yeah, yeah. Well, when does the black people get a chance to say that? We've been in this town just as long. Just as long. You hear what I'm saying? When does the black man get a chance to say, well, my my grandfather I've was a police heard. officer. I've never heard of it. No. 333-8160. Let's let the people in. 333 Good morning. You're on the air. What's your question or comment? Hello. Uh, yeah, I want to answer that question about why they're not passing that test. Because I was at that Alderman board meeting that they had downtown. Yeah. And Go they ahead. And they were saying, and they're saying they're not passing that, uh, uh, some, like a psychiatric part of the test. They just talking about oh, so they're all the black people crazy. <laughs> yes, they saying they are not passing that psychiatric test. I said, what? Yeah, yeah. As crazy as all the ones we got out there, you can't put them out there. Yeah. yeah, how about the how, how about the psychiatric test for the eighty two that's been making them racist comments? Yeah. Huh? Now that now that is a real problem. That now that that's some that's some that, that they need therapy. They passing their test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all of them need to be retrained all over again from having that other guy that was supposed to be over the country, going from state to state, uh, you know, training them with his psychiatric man. He's training them, and it's just going down the line. So, no, they, they not have that psychiatric test, so they need to go back and try again. Because <laughs> they got that all twisted up. And that dog on this, I, I think the guy's name was Frank, and the, the, uh, the, the judge and the sheriff that was all there was talking about. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to change. They might well yeah. Going on in there. yeah, that's right. Thank you, baby. We really appreciate you. Three one four three 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 eight one sixty. Good morning. You on the air? What's your question or comment? Hello. But I agree with you, and uh, in that, in that they should live in the city. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank and, you uh, so much. Because you know what? When you think about this, it does put pressure on us to make the city a great place for everybody. That's to right. All across. That's right. And when you have the, when you put, when you lower the standard, to me, when you, that's what I call lowering the standard. Because the taxpayers in the city of St. Louis pay for their, <coughs> that's right. There should be people that are willing to stay in the city and be a part of the growth of the city. That's right. And it is upon, it is incumbent upon us as leaders. I said us, all of us. You get what I'm saying? To make the city a better place. Right. And we should be lowering the standards by saying, we gon' we gon' have taxpayers to pay you. It's a terrible That's, thing. I don't like that. It's no, a terrible like thing. That, you know, but it's a lot of things going on that I question. We gotta we gotta we gotta tighten the reins in the city. Period. Say, and oh. we gotta look. To we got to do that. Yeah. Because oh. there's a lot of things going on. We got a toy yard scandal still going on. Are we going to do a show on that? Are we going to be able to do something on that? When 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 can we get to that? Let's do okay. that show on that Saturday. Okay. We're ready to do a Saturday. Yeah. Let's do a show on this Saturday. Well, we got to get, get it in. I got all the information. Let's do a show on this Saturday. Because I think that, you know, in order for us to uh, move forward and make the city a better place, we have to correct some processes and some systems that are in the wrong place. These <laughs> systems got to be broken down. We got to break the chain we, of these systems in order for the city to move forward. We got to correct some people that are in the wrong place. <laughs> we got to correct some people that well, are in the wrong place. Right. And it's okay. And listen, I heard it. You know, they put those comments out there. It's okay. 
if you don't like people and you hate these people. Huh. Just don't take a job representing Thank you. These people. Thank you. Right. That's all. It's That's okay. all. Yeah. You know, you, you're entitled to, to your own opinion. To That's your right. Feelings. That's right. You're entitled to it. You're entitled to it. But don't take a position that that puts you in a position that you don't like. Right. Because you got to try to protect and serve some people you hate. Mm. But okay oh, with that. I'm oh, okay with that. Yeah. But, right. But don't do it in this city. Right. That's all I'm saying. Don't do it in this city. Don't do it in this state. Let's, you know, let's make it a better place for everybody to live and dwell cohesively together okay. and put our personal differences and all that crap aside. Okay. Yay. A break? It's break time? Man, we lit across the board. We redlined. We redlined here. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you gotta, I, don't know what to I guess you do. <laughs> well, yeah, you, do. Do. you tell me it's time for a break. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, then, so what we need to do, Eddie Simmons? Keep it on lock. Quit playing. Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Please. screen. Today's, uh, today is the third. Of we can August. call them wayward Negroes. What, what kind of Negroes? What's she say? <laughs> Away with that girl. All right, baby, I got it. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, it's not your mom, not your dad. But you declare it. Yes, sir. You take the position. Yeah. It's up to you. It's on you. It's in you. That's what it is. It's an army rising up, man. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. You see that sister that was in here today? Yes, sir. Got book bags and all kind of stuff. Yeah. Getting it in. Yeah. That's right. Devin Alexander, thank you. That's right. James Clark, what they doing today? Man, James Clark and I'm right down the street, 7600 uh, Oakland at Forest Park. Uh, amnesty. Anybody need amnesty? Anybody that have any problems in most of those municipalities, oh, yeah. come on through mm -hmm. and touch bases and see what Brother James doing. Also, you know, he's putting a group of men together That's right. uh, talking about being on the bus stop. Escorts. There's a lot of young Escorts. kids. Yes. So a lot of mothers and them don't get a chance to stay there long enough to send them little babies down the street. We want to be out there as men. He's putting a piece together on Monday and Tuesday uh, at 3600 Delmore. All you got to do is come on through there from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock to get registered. But let's go out there. Let's stand up as men and start doing the things. James, we appreciate you, my brother. Oh, they can say what they want to, but James is doing the work. Hey, yo, they the case. They, when they get through talking, this brother's working, BJ to BJ. Look, look. Haters, <laughs> open up the lane. Haters, open up the lane. That's right. Get out. Move, move, move. You get out the me. way. You're not mealy, Bob. Move, You're not move. Mealy, Bob, at all. Get out the way. That's what that's a, somebody else, a, a song, wasn't it? Move, get out the way. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. Hey, uh, Pat Washington called so call me. No, she said, uh, <laughs> she said that the police department was a way of catching up and <laughs> correcting wayward Negroes wayward. in South Carolina in the 1700s. That it is, BJ. That is in the 1700s. That's how the police department came about mm, right, because right. there were black people that were being <laughs> disruptive. Wait, wait, wait. It was black people oh. that were being oh. disruptive <laughs> in the 1700s, you know. And How so, could they be disruptive? They, 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 they weren't mealy mouth enough. I think they were trying to still, run away. You still, they were running. You still had, That's what it was. Ooh, you still had some belligerent like, black right. <laughs> You had belligerent. They, 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 they were slaves, yeah, they were, <laughs> but they, they were still away. belligerent, uh -huh. trying to run away. So the police department. No, no. So the police department, they called them slave patrols in the 1700s. Bands of people coming together wow. to watch for wayward Negroes and called them the Slave Patrol in the 1700s. Okay. Yeah, and out of that they morphed into the police department. Mm. That's yeah. what they did. They morphed into what we now call That's the, the police department. That's wow. the bad. Well, show me one. Oh, That's the plant. <laughs> oh God. That's the Why did you show me this? <laughs> Why did you show me this? this plantation. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. Yeah. 
Plantation police. <laughs> Plantation oh, yeah. police. Oh, I've seen that before. South Carolina runaway slave patrol. Yeah. Look at this man. 1858. 1858. Plantation police. Oh my God. Can you put that I'm trying to think. Well, I'm wondering whether I would I'm wondering whether I would be away with Negro back to here. What it's, it's kinda hard, kind of hard to be many mouth. Would I be away with Negro? Is that I'm trying to say Shaheed, Shaheed, you know you would be one. And you can't say, well, hey, Pot hey, can't send that by hey, the skillet. Hey, but you know what? <laughs> they, they would have to keep me and Shahid in different states. <laughs> we couldn't be nowhere near. Because <laughs> if we got to collaborate, if we got to collaborate, it would be a lot of way with me, bro. We say, y'all better come. We say, y'all better come on. <laughs> hey, boy. Y'all better get the wrong. Only on Hallelujah 1600. I got to give one more plug out to this four-year-old. She has a piece that they're doing today, yes. nonviolent uh, youth rally at Lattery and, and Halley. I'm trying to keep my... You just like you just like like <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you crying about being away with this girl? <laughs> I was trying to be a shirt made saying that I'm a way with I'm trying to be professional. My professional is. That's how the police department started. I better get back on the nonviolent piece that they're doing. This is the little sister that lost her teeth. And they do doing, yeah, she's four years old and her teeth came out. So I'm steady pushing her. She's an entrepreneur. We got to talk about blacks that have their own business. And they're gonna be on Lattery and Halley with that Italian ice. So I have to push that Italian ice from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. You got to go there and get you some Italian ice. I don't know how she's gonna do it between that little teeth, but I know she can figure it out because she's gonna be way with. And you wait with me, I know you're gonna be way with. Let's go. And Woody, I got to, if I don't say nothing else, but 360 break, and we didn't get a chance to get our black business in there. Next week, I promise you, I'll make it up because we don't never wanna be on here without pushing black business. But 360 break service. I'm telling you, I swear by them. Right. If I'm telling you about anybody that's dealing with car, nobody's gonna work on Brother Shahid's car. Plus, I don't trust everybody up in my car because right. I'm too wayward. <laughs> and I don't want nothing to happen to my car. We, we have been wayward Negroes this morning. <laughs> we, we, have, we, we have been some wayward Negroes this morning. They're they, they, they gonna send the slave patrol. <laughs> Send the slave patrol after us. We better watch out, man. You better watch out. We got how many more minutes we got? Hey, the sons are gonna get us. Senator yeah, gonna get up. Yeah, let's and go to the line. 314-333-8160. 314-333-8160. Good morning. You on the air. What's your question or comment for the way with Negro? <laughs> 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 Oh, Vicky, I'm doing fine. How's it going? It's going, it's going okay. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. I just wanted to say, uh, you mentioned a program some time ago about police and, um, getting along. That was called the uh, uh, Cop Next Door and the Teacher Next Door. It's a federal program, and they call it now the Good Neighbor Next Door. Mm -hmm. Well, we um, implemented that in 1993 when I was the mayor. We called it the First Time Homeowners Program. That's right. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's called the Good Neighbor Next Door still in existence, but it is for educators and policemen and law enforcement officers. Now, the psychological test you guys mentioned earlier, um, I think they're finding that those tests are biased. Uh, toward oh, uh, minorities. What? Culturally biased. Oh. Yeah, like what? any standardized test. I ask you the same question about yeah. five different times, five different ways. Uh, if you would bother someone for stealing, if they agree to <laughs> give the money back, and you, you know, all this kind of stuff. And people, they, people think Within their heart, they're not to forgive that person. Well, maybe we would. But right. We wouldn't. Right. <laughs> the, the the real candidate for for the police officer yes. would not yes. would not forgive him. He would not forgive. That's right. He, 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 either you did it or you didn't. If you did it, then I can't. Ha I, I have no sympathy for you. That's what he's saying. A lot of people that get caught by that. Yeah. If you, if you answer that same question five different ways, then they're gonna. Yeah. Okay. Then. All right. Then. Thank you for your call. Three one four three 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 eight one sixty. Good morning. You on the air? What's your question or comment? Good morning. 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 Good morning.
Good morning, Mr. Bozzi. This is to shine the truth. I was telling y'all, I already know how I feel about the system, and I know it's corrupt, but I was just telling to invite you and Brother Shaheem and y'all crew out to the candlelight tonight and claim for the inmates that we lost. When it, when is that now? You said it's a candlelight? What? I'm having a candlelight tonight in front of St. Louis County Justice Center for the um, inmates that died, including my son. Oh, okay. The inmates that we lost. What, so I'm having a candlelight out there what, tonight. What, what time is the system? It's at 7 o'clock. Yeah. The negligent management of the Justice Center. You see what I'm saying? The negligent supervision of the Justice Center. The negligent hiring of of the justice center see the negligent training of the of the of the employees at the justice center see these are things that we got to check into and i found we filed a lawsuit uh on behalf of cedric dunn we're gonna get to the bottom of it all right babe thank you thank you very much all right now we got two minutes to be waywardly. <laughs> two, two more minutes before BJ cut us off. Yeah, because I, cut I, off. I, I didn't know I was wayward until. <laughs> but I'm, you glad, I'm, I'm glad I came today. <laughs> I found out where it all started. And look, I ended up working for him. Oh, wait, but you're different, though. Hey, I'm different. Yeah, but I'm, most de I'm most definitely different, well, <laughs> but the police department was formed to get yes. hold of the Waywood Negroes. Negroes. Yeah, that's it, man. Well, I'm, well, I'm trying, trying to tell you, man. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but um, and the it's, it, it's been up. real. Uh, it's 9.59, so we're going to have to go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want, we want to thank you. I, I, I appreciate you bearing with us to let us have our fun today because we really enjoyed it. Uh, very and uh, show them, man. I mean, the way people are calling, the way people. I think last, last year we got up to about twelve thousand viewers. Twelve thousand. And that had nothing to do with my phone. That had nothing to do with the Felicia phone. Another. We had seven people streaming. This week here, we got people streaming, and it's it's a blessing. I'm thankful uh, for what's happening here. Twelve thousand views. Now that's not the that's not the listening audience. No. That's no. the viewing audience. That has nothing to do with sharing power, right. liking power. That right. has nothing to do with that. Yeah. And when you got seven people streaming, you, you, know, you might have twenty thousand. Yeah, so we want to thank people. What what what, what, what you gonna say? Like it, share it. Go ahead. Both of them. Like Thank it, you. Share it and keep it on out there. It's time for BJ. Is giving us a hand. He's giving us the point. He's telling us at that time. I'm, I'm, I'm every Saturday. With you. Every, Saturday. every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on KTZ 1600. Keep it on lock. Quit playing. And Bosley Jr. Show. <laughs>